Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel 2022 and we're going to start off with a bang because today I'm going to talk to you about seascape photography and I'm going to include my seascape photography, photography tips if I can even say it. But basically speaking, I'm going to talk you through some of the photographs I took there recently. I'm going to talk you through the conditions and the weather. And sometimes the weather can be your worst enemy or it can be your best friend. I'm going to show you a few very short clips now in a second about what's happened for me this week weather-wise. So let's get into it and have a look and see. The weather in 2022 doesn't like me. Is it going to rain? Yeah. Thank you, 2022. That's, that's where the sun's setting. <laughs> so here we go. I'm going to try a live photograph. I just got absolutely destroyed. Uh, hold tough. Gonna see how that looks. Just give Eddie a view. Oh, happy with that. Now, as you can see, the weather went from being beautiful, incredibly windy, and then lashing rain within minutes. The next day, then, I went out, climbed up a hill. That's a beautiful lake on top of a hill. The weather was really nice. It was looking like it was going to be a nice sunset. And then out of nowhere, it started snowing. So now what is, <laughs> what's got a lake up on top of the hill got to do with seascapes? Nothing, but I'm just talking about weather. The last video then you can see, the last video is purely about going out anyway. The forecast was bad. It wasn't looking good. When I arrived, I could see those dark clouds coming and I was thinking, is it going to absolutely lash rain on top of me? Almost certainly. Will I take a chance in it? Yes, I will. This was my reward for taking the chance. Beautifully dark clouds, the breaking light just bursting through, lovely sweeping motion in the seas. So it really does pay to head out, even if the conditions aren't going to be right. And one of the videos in between then, you can see uh, that was one of my first days out in quite a while doing seascape photography. And I'll be honest, with you, it didn't work. Um, I was very rusty. I hadn't taken any photographs, any seascape images in about 12 months. And it really showed. I'm going to show you some of the photographs here now too as well in a minute so you can see the ones that did work and the ones that didn't work. Actually, let's have a look at them now. The first one wasn't too bad. It looked, it was reasonably okay. Uh, the sun was, it wasn't blown out. It was just very misty conditions. But the second and the third, the focal length was just too short. And the rock is a million miles away. The final shot then, um, I cropped in as a panoramic and that's reasonably okay, but I probably won't be keeping it. So as you can see, <laughs> The, the, first, the first few I took just weren't right. Why weren't they right? And Kieran, why are you showing us these now? I'm showing you these now because I'm telling you I was in completely the wrong frame of mind for taking seascape images. Purely because there was a lot going on for me that day. I had I was using a new camera. I bought the Z7 Mark II. I had a new lens, the 14 to 30 mm lens that I hadn't used for landscapes before. I hadn't used that camera for um, seascapes before. Um, I had a new filter holder. Um, I had new filters. Uh, I had a new tripod. It, it, everything, it was like I was starting from scratch. There was a whole load going on. So everything I had to get used to again. And my mind wasn't in the right place, which brings me to tip number one in seascape photography. You got to be there, you got to be present, and you got to connect with what you're photographing. What I was doing was technically trying to get the shot right. And yes, it was exposed correctly. Yes, I got water movement. Yes, the rocks and all were there, but it was just completely wrong. The focal length was wrong. The shutter speed was wrong, and it just didn't look good. Any of the photographs, I'm going to bin all those images. I don't like any of them from that photo shoot. So I ended up taking a load of photographs because again, I was getting used to everything and it worked, but I didn't get good images. So that's why I'm saying you've got to be present. What I normally do when I do shooting seascapes or what I used 
always do, and what I didn't do the first night, was go to a place, stop, think, look, absorb what's going on, see the movement, see what's happening around the place, and try and capture that in an image. Don't take 200 photographs with maybe four good ones. Take 30 photographs and try and get 10 good ones. That's improving your strike ratio, which means it's going to give you more confidence going out then too as well again, and you're just going to enjoy the experience more. I came home last night and I was really happy. And there was a marked difference between the first night and the second night. The second night, I felt as though I achieved something, I got good pictures, I was happy with the results. The first night, I came home deflated, especially once I saw the images, because I was thinking, look, that's just not right. That's, that's not my style of photography, and it just, it, it's something I wasn't proud of. So again, connect, be a part of it, think about the image you want, Otherwise, you're capturing a snapshot, and a snapshot is great, don't get me wrong, you're just going, click, there's your image, God, that was lovely. But if you put a bit of thought into it, put a bit of you into it, the image becomes your own, it gives, you get your own style in your photographs, and your, your, your passion and your, or your, your, your creativity comes across better. So it's not just blend, oh bang, there's your seascape, and thank you very much. It's more about, ooh, Here's your seascape. Now look at the rock down there. Watch the water whipping past that. Now look at the sun over there. Look what the clouds are doing. So what happens is you tell a complete story. So when the viewer looks at the image, they say, oh my God, that looks nice. But the more they look at it, the more they see. The more they see, the more they like it. And that's cool. That's what you want. So tip number one for seascape photography is don't pick up the camera and press the shutter button. Look, put the camera down, absorb your surroundings, look at the scene, think about what you want to capture and think about what you don't want to capture. Can changing focal length vary the image completely? Can, can you give a person a different feel for the image just by moving slightly to your left or to your right? Because there might be a signpost you're trying to remove or there could be, you know, a, a bit of a rock face just sticking out there. You just want to get that out of the image. So just think about it. As soon as you press the shutter button, it's too late. And there is nothing worse than going home with a set of images, switching on your computer, popping them in and saying, ah, oh, if only. That, that if only moment is a, is a killer. I hate it. And that's what happened to me the first night. So that's why I'm saying connect. Connect and just try and get the image right. It doesn't matter if you missed focus. It doesn't matter if you got your exposure slightly off. The point is you can connect with the photograph. All these things you can build on slowly. The point is if you can't take a photograph without a soul, without a purpose, it's not much good to you. Again, getting back to your exposure, I'm going to talk about it at a different date. I'm going to different date. I'm going to talk about focus too as well on a different date. Today is all about seascapes. So the next tip I have for you is shooting low, shooting wide, and get in the water. You need to be a part of it. With water, the action is at the shoreline. So you need to be at the shoreline. People standing five or six meters back, you're missing the image. Now it can still work, and it does still work. But for me personally, for an awful lot of seascapes, you need to be wide, you need to be close, and you need to go down low. And when I say go down low, I'm talking about having your tripod maybe a meter off the ground, max. Because as you're going low, you're giving the water more height and more stature in your image, which is giving the waves a bit more dominance in the image, and it's giving them a slightly more aggressive feel or a larger feel in the photograph. And going low then again, if you've rocks in the water, again, you're giving them more height. Rather than shooting down at them, you're shooting at their level, so you're giving them more stature. Now, the one thing to be careful of is, do not go so low that the rock is breaking the horizon, that it's just breaking the horizon. Or, if you're going to break the horizon, do it well, do it properly, make sure people know you did that on purpose. You know, it's, it's like the photograph um, I have up here now, which I, sh I showed you already, I think. I have, I have the video edited yet, so I don't know if I showed it to you or not. I either showed it to you already, or I'm going to show it to you in a minute. But that photograph, I broke the horizon. And when I looked at it first, I said, oh my God, I need to break. I'm breaking the horizon, I need to stop. And then I stopped and I looked and I said, no, I like it. And I'm going to stick with it. I don't care about rules. I don't care about anything along those lines. I take photographs for me. 
If I enjoy the photographs, that is all that matters. That really and truly is all that matters to me. So that's why I took that shot. That's why I broke the horizon. And um, yeah, so think about your photography, shoot low, shoot wide, and get in the water. On this first shot, this was shot around shoulder height, which is what most people would do, with a wide angle lens. Then I dropped down low with a wide angle lens, same settings, and while these photographs aren't beautiful, they're just purely to show you the difference in positioning and what a difference it makes. Dropping down lower has given that rock so much more power in the image. It looks a lot bigger. It has a stronger presence, and it, it feels more imposing. The next tip I have for you is a safety tip. Never ever turn your back in the sea. Now, it might seem like it's okay, but different countries and different areas have different sea conditions and coastal conditions. I'm living on the, the southwest coast of Ireland, and we have some fairly, some fairly large swells here at the best of times, and we get rogue waves, and the sea conditions can be quite dangerous. And it's the one thing I always tell clients in workshops, never ever turn your back in the sea. I don't care what you're doing. If you're at the shoreline, you do not turn your back on the sea. It's just too dangerous. A rogue wave comes along. You could be, you could be taking photographs for 20, 30 minutes. The waves might be a meter, maybe a meter and a half high, Next thing, suddenly, you could get a set of one, two, or three waves come in, and they could be three to four meters high. It does happen. I've seen it happen numerous times. That wave hits you, it knocks you over, and then it sucks you out. If you're carrying a backpack on your bag, or on your back, that'll take you under. So you need to be incredibly careful. The next tip is to get good waterproof clothes and good waterproof shoes. That's gonna give you a very good grounding. You're gonna get wet, you're gonna get cold because you're gonna be out there for quite a while. So if you get cold, your fingers get stiff. You, you feel uncomfortable. Your, your creative, creativity is pushed back because you're not in your comfort zone. So get warm, get comfy, loads of layers, bring them with you, you can always take them off if it comes to it. So that's the next one. After that then, um, your tripod. A good tripod is key in seascape photography because you're battling an awful lot of elements. So get a good tripod and when you're at the shoreline, don't just place the tripod legs on top of the sand. That's a recipe for disaster. What's gonna happen is as the water runs out, it's gonna undermine the foundation of the tripod legs and the tripod is gonna start moving and it's gonna start slowly sinking down to the sand. What I do is I get my tripod and I push it down into place. When the tripod is down in place, it's bedded into the into the seabed, so it, it's, it's not going to descend underneath the tripod legs, isn't going to be undermined, and what it actually does is it makes the tripod more solid as a result. So that's a huge bonus, and that's that would be normally one of my top, tip, top tips for clients. And again, I have a blog post in the description down below, and I'm gonna, I, I have all the, all the details and all the tips in that. So if you want to read through later on, please do. Your next best friend is a set of neutral density filters or ND filters. Now, you can go cheap and cheerful, try them out, and if you're happy with them, and if you think, oh my God, I like doing long exposures, I like the artistic creativity it gives you, then you can say to yourself, right, brilliant, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna buy a good set of ND filters. And please do. But don't buy ND filters in the midground because they generally are a bit of a waste of money. You know, you're going to find they're not as sharp. You're going to find as uh, what you call it, um, their color neutrality isn't great. There's a slight color casting them. So go away and get yourself either a good set of ND filters or buy yourself a real cheap set. Um, you'll notice by my hat, uh, I'm actually a formal high tech brand ambassador. So um, I use all their filters. I've been using their filters for about six or seven years now at this stage. I absolutely love them. I've used all the other brands too as well, but I really love the formal high tech filters. For a few different reasons i suppose the color neutrality is the first one sharpness is the second one and the third one and which is a huge bonus is they're bonded filters in the firecrest ultra filters specifically and the pro filters so what it basically means is you have two sheets of glass the nd coating is sandwiched in between the two sheets of glass so this is this is a real crude way of describing this now but when you need to clean your filter afterwards and if you have let's say a small little grain of sand or something on your cleaning cloth and if you wipe it across your filter 
you can scratch the coating because the coating is in between the two planes of glass. So that's a really cool advantage for seascape photographers. I'm not going to go into it anymore. It's not a sales day, but um, oh, sorry, speaking of sales days, there actually is a 10% discount code. Again, I'm going to put that in the, in the description down below too as well. So um, you can get 10% off their filters. Oh yes, the next thing I suppose I have to talk to you about is movement. And this is where you can, this is where you can completely transform a photograph by your choice of shutter speed. So if you, if you want to really freeze that, let's say that, that brutal action of a wave crash up against a rock and the spray flying off, you can use a high speed shutter speed. So you might be shooting at one five hundred of a second or something along those lines, and that's going to freeze those droplets, or one one thousand of a second, it's going to freeze those droplets flying through the air, which is going to give you this very dramatic, energetic photograph. The, I suppose you can, you can always shoot um, a long exposure then too as well, of course, which is basically going to slow down the, sorry, slow down the sea, kind of give you a dragging motion to the water, like I showed you in the photograph before, which I'm just going to pop up on the screen there now again. So as you can see in this photograph, due to the long exposure, it's actually the sea can be seen dragging going back out long again. So it, it really does highlight the motion in the water. The rocks are perfectly still, so they are coming across rock steady then too as well of course your number one best friend when you're taking seascapes is the weather the weather is going to dictate an awful lot on the day if the weather is dark then it's going to be sort of dark moody images you're going to get if it's bright and if it's cheerful romantic lighting around sunset now and whatnot you can get some really beautiful soft heartwarming images the sort of images you look at and go wow and then you get images like the one up there which is basically a mixture of the two, <laughs> which is, is going to give you a really dramatic and a really soft image. And it's just, it's just kind of, it's, it's one of those things that I suppose you take a risk every time you go taking seascapes because you don't know what it's going to throw up at you. You don't know how the sea is going to behave. You don't know how the weather is going to behave. You get a rough idea, but I shouldn't have went out yesterday. Judging my forecast, it was going to rain. It was going to be horrible. So it just didn't look right. I took a chance on it and that chance paid off. So I would say, you know, a, a lucky photographer is always going to be better than a good photographer because a lucky photographer is going to be in the right place at the right time. A good photographer could be the best photographer in the world, but if they're in the wrong place at the wrong time, it's no good to you. So keep getting out, keep experimenting, keep experimenting with shutter speeds and keep experimenting with your creativity. And again, as I say, I go into this in far more detail in my blog post. So you want to have a look in the description down below. I'll put a link in there for that. You can have a read through it. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible. If you would like to see uh, a more in-depth seascape photography video, as in a video of me actually physically going out, taking photographs, talking you through it, and then... Um, kind of sharing my thought process, my techniques and whatnot, please do let me know again and I'll try and get it done over the next couple of weeks. And um, other than that, guys, uh, I just want to say thanks for watching and uh, please like, comment, share and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell and see you out there. Thanks again.